Stossel23 here, and today's night therapy I have the Concept Knives Fin Rear. This is designed by Mr. Greg Schaub of Sparrow Knife Company. And uh, this particular variation with the satin blade, uh, natural micarta, uh, bolster, and titanium lower side comes in at $188. But if this is not your jam, there are six different variations, including this one, uh, of this knife. I will pop them up on the screen now, one at a time. Uh, you have the Jade G10 uh, bolster. That one's going to run you $157. The Blue G10 is going to run you $159. CF bolster with a black titanium and black blade that's going to run you $199. have a Dama steel version that is going to run you $169. There's one last one that is a carbon fiber with a bead blasted titanium and that is going to run you $178. So yeah, they definitely uh, hit every one of the possibilities that you could possibly think of. Let's get some quick specs out of the way so you have an idea of the size of the knife. You have a total length of 7.9 inches, so it's in that medium range, medium to large. You have a blade length of 3.45 inches, a grip area in the handle of 3.35 inches. If you choke up, you have a grip area of 4.45 inches. You have a handle scale thickness of 0.53, a little above average. Uh, closed width at the two widest port portions in the pocket is 1.46 inches so not terrible uh, blade stock thickness is pretty chunky at 0.138 inches and the behind the edge thickness on my particular knife ranges from 16 to 18 thousandths sharpened at 20 degrees per side I think what I love about the fin rear the most is the fact that it's different. It goes against the norm, and that's pretty much what the designer was trying to uh, accomplish with this design. Now let's take a closer look at this. You have an attractive modified drop point harpoon blade shape, or you can call it whatever you want, but to me that's what it looks like. And at first, I wasn't really that keen on the knife. And I was, I don't, I, at first I didn't understand why at Blade Show, it just didn't do it for me. I'm going to pop a picture up on the screen and this, the reason for me not really jiving with the knife is because it had this double area in this forward finger choil. It had like a, a sharpening choil that went into a finger choil. It just kind of looked funny to me and I think it kind of turned me off. So I'm really glad to see that the final production, uh, they, they went with just a forward finger choil, one, you know, good curve going through there. It looks a lot better to me and it feel, felt a lot better in my hand. So I, and now I, I do know why it kind of turned me off in the beginning. The blade steel they used on the knife is CPMS 35VN. And it's going to hold an edge close to that of S30V as well, uh, which is great. Uh, it's a great cutlery steel and it's a good performer, it, at least in my opinion. One thing that I didn't notice until I got this knife was that this is the only one that has a satin finish. If you like satin finishes, this is the only one of the models uh, that came with the satin and the Damascus one. Uh, all the rest have a stonewashed blade, even the black washed which is something I would have rathered, especially for a user. Even though this satin finish is nice and even throughout, you have the maker's, uh, the, the designer's maker's mark right there. There's his name, Mr. Greg Schaub, and the name of the knife down here. On this side, you have the blade steel and the model number and the concept logo. You have this nice needle-like point that should be excellent for piercing task or edge leading task. Um, this area is very, very comfortable in this pinch grip and you could get a lot of thrusting motion or, you know, just getting close up onto that blade. So let's test out this blade and see how well it performs. One thing that I noticed really quickly is that whenever I was cutting uh, choked back on that handle or just in the regular grip on the handle that the material kept falling into that forward finger choil so for me the best spot for doing you know this type of cutting is choked all the way up that way you're not so far from the cutting edge you're right up on that cutting edge and the knife has just the amount of belly to uh, do this and do it comfortably without sliding out of the material with that natural 
uh, hand motion where your hands kind of arcing down through the material knife came with a good edge from factory and it blades through the cardboard without a problem I would get into the pine 2x4 to test the ergonomics and how well that edge is still biting um, right off the back I noticed once again that far finger trial was the uh, spot for me to be nice and locked in pretty darn comfortable however I did notice a very slight hot spot because of where my medium sized hands land on the handle scales uh, my pinky was kind of falling into that lock bar relief and it kind of pinched it a little bit only when I was putting in a lot of force uh, into the cut uh, not so terrible to where I felt like I had to stop and put on gloves or anything but I did feel like I can get a lot of forceful uh, pressure behind that cutting edge whenever I was choked up like that in that hammer grip very very uh, solid chunks of wood flying off in the beginning right now I'm just kind of slipping off of that and that's my fault now on to the half inch twisted sisal rope and even though this is the most uncomfortable of all the tests I do um, I, I do think it's so awesome when a knife does well and it's still comfortable while doing it this knife uh, did excellent especially in that that forward tip area it thins out uh, you have a swedge that goes all the way down to that tip it was nice and sharp and that pinch grip was very comfortable especially because of the grippy micarta to hold on to yeah i do put on gloves for this because it really tears up my hands when i don't but um, i ended up doing 40 cuts because i ran out of rope and i still had other tests to do after this one uh, like the the rest of this these tests now here <laughs> that tip was making short work of the material for any of the materials that I led with the tip first uh, the blade being all belly uh, and having a center line tip the knife really shines when cutting on the flat surfaces especially <clears throat> with a uh, slicing motion motion into the materials the knife was great in that pinch grip once again especially um, like I said with that grip of my micarta so the knife's not kind of not shifting in the hand as I'm putting a lot of pressure down cutting some of these materials and one of the reasons why I cut all these different materials one it's to simulate using the knife for you know many different things that you possibly could use your knife over a uh, period of time and two a lot of these materials are very abrasive to a cutting edge so you can kind of see how that knife is gonna hold up you know rubber cardboard uh, the denim all that stuff is highly abrasive to uh, your cutting edge especially cardboard uh, you, you could have you know dirt trapped in that cardboard or something so all this stuff will just simulate you know extended use and this edge held up outstanding it's look at it, it's blowing through this denim which you know some knives do terrible on well I think the blade performed outstanding um, excellent excellent job up here in the front very nice and comfortable doing those drag cuts and in this choked up position was probably my favorite you can get right up onto the material and I did notice like I said when I choked back in this area that my hands a little far from that edge you know that's some of the problems that you get whenever you have a forward finger toil so you're gonna want to choke up on that doing stuff like cardboard where you're not you know slicing with that belly now let's close it up and take a look at the deployment options you have two different deployment options you have thumb stud and this tang protrudes up and it is considered a front flipper so the, it does have jimping um, I usually like it a little finer than that however it does a good job I just apply a little bit of pressure the detent is dialed in on this knife especially for the front flipper if you like front flipping actions this one has a crisp detent now the detent is a little stiff for the thumb stud however put a little pressure on there and it does come out I can't reverse flick this one per se but uh, you know I don't know it might just be mine I do know that you know it, like I said it's a pretty stout detent the action on it is very very smooth riding on ceramic ball bearings and a ceramic detent ball very positive click on the detent close as you can see listen to this very positive click there uh, you can get to the knife left-handed very easily however it's not 
chair is not uh, tapped for left-handed carry. Now let's take a look at the scales. That's what is different than most knives you see with bolsters because it's almost like a reverse bolster effect or I guess you could call it that because your normal bolster is going to look like this where you have, have the the frame part of the knife because this the titanium is a frame here just like on this one your frame at the top and then the the skit the cover material at the bottom which is just switched on here and it makes it an interesting dynamic because this would be considered a bolster lock i guess you could say because you know the the lock is pretty much in the bolster area now this one would be considered i guess a liner lock however that is a very stout liner there however you want to look at it i think it's interesting looking and it's you know it's not it's an it's a refreshing uh departure from what we've been seeing from you know there's just so many knives that look all the same so it's nice you know it's it's nice to get something different from time to time and not to mention one that is a great user you know this one has has definitely surprised me in several different ways and uh definitely glad i decided to check this one out you have a torx t8 for the pivot you have a t6 body screw right here in the back and you also have T6 on the body screws. Uh, you have two standoffs, open construction, so uh, it's easy to blow that knife out if you get some gunk up by the pivot or clean it out with the Q-tip, whatever you want to do. There is a lanyard hole. I would have loved to see that knife not there. I think it would have looked a lot cleaner. They could have put a lanyard pin right there. It would have been perfectly fine. I'm just not a lanyard guy, so if you are, cool. Um, the scales are very slightly radius, nice and contoured. That added in the comfort of the, the grip. The edges are softened, so you don't have any sharp edges where you don't want them to be. Uh, the transition, I can feel a little bit right here. It's a little proud right there, but uh, nothing you know that concerns me. It's a very tight fitment there, no gaps. Even though I would have loved to see that uh, lock bar relief cut out on the inside, um, I do like the fact that they did it a little bit different by putting the two little channels in there. Um, I, I did mention that whenever I was doing the wood, wood cutting, uh, whenever I was choked up like this, for my medium-sized hands, my pinky is landing on this hump. Now, you know, that that may be different for, you know, every hand, especially if you have a, a large or an extra large hand. But I didn't I didn't really notice it bothering me until I really bared down into the wood and uh, not enough to where I felt like I had to throw on gloves right away. There is no internal milling in there uh, because you already have a lot of the titanium milled out for this top scale let's see what that weight is first in grams 119.7 grams and 4.22 ounces this is not going to be a featherweight but i had no problems carrying this it, it, it was very comfortable in pocket let's check out the carry you have a nice milled 3d titanium pocket clip um, that is well done it's it's nice and contoured just like the scales um, there is a little point here but i had no problems with it poking my hand or anything it was comfortable whenever I was gripping the knife uh, doing all the testing and I found that it goes in and out of the pocket nicely it has good spring to it now let's check it out in the pocket I found that it slides in nicely you don't have any flipper tab or anything that's going to get in the way when you put if you put something else in the pocket uh, it stays close to the side of the pocket so you can get your whole hand in there easily and that's what you have sticking up so you do have something to grab a hold to to pull it out of the pocket um, however, you won't be able to carry it left side because it's not tapped for left-handed carry. Now let's check out, oop, let's check out the lockup. Uh, the knife is locked up at around, I'd say 30% or I could say 100% of the lock bar insert, which this knife does have. It has a removable hardened lock bar inter, uh, stainless steel interface. So, you know, if your lock wears out, you could essentially change out that piece and you would have a fresh new lockup. Um, lockup on mine is rock solid, no play up or down, left or right. Something that I did notice, it looks like their geometry on their blade tang is pretty steep to me. I, 
you know, I could be wrong, but a lot of times you, it almost, a, a good one almost seems like it's straight across, even though it has, you know, a slight taper down to it. It's not affecting the knife whatsoever right now, but, you know, <laughs> will it affect it once it starts to travel over? I have no idea. Uh, just something that I noticed. Some quick size comparisons. We have the Hogue Ritter RSK and the Mini RSK. It's it's about close to the same length as the, the large RSK. However, you have about the same blade length as the Mini RSK. You have a little bit more, but not by much because of that forward finger toil. Next up, we have the Spyderco PM2 and the Para 3. Um, it's right in the middle of both of those. You have about the same uh, cutting edge as the, the PM2. And lastly, we have the Ontario Rap Model 1 and the Rap Model 2. Once again, it's in the middle of both of those two. All right, now for my nitpicks and complaints. Uh, I would have loved this one to be a stonewash blade. You got the more rugged appeal with the micarta. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Um, however, you know, it's not a big deal because there are other variations with a stonewash blades. This is the only one with the satin finish, as far as my knowledge. Um, also, like I said, the detent is pretty stout. Um, you know, excellent for the front flipper or excellent for those who like, you know, pretty stout detents. I prefer mine just a little bit lighter than this, just so it has an easy, easy clean break to it. This one has a nice snappy break to it. Um, you're not going to fail it as long as you don't slip off of that thumb stud. And another thing, this is just a nitpick because... I think a part of me has not been loving forward finger toils. I noticed that I usually find it to be more comfortable back here when I can get that edge, you know, right here, you know, up up on it. I do see the appeal with being able to get right into that edge, you know, so you can get some nice precise cuts in there. But I don't know. I just haven't been enjoying them that much. Um, overall, though the overall value of the knife i think you know i think it's priced well you, you got a lot going on here it's a collaboration with a custom knife maker uh mr greg Shobbs is, serves in the u.s coast guard so he is an awesome individual uh he's from mississippi close to my home my home state of louisiana and uh they give you so many different variations to choose from, so they should at least have one in there that you like if you enjoy the overall aesthetics of the design. Alrighty, that's my final thoughts on the concept fin rear. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.